Hi everyone, Adam here again with another Winning with SketchUp video. I have a quick video for you guys today. I want to take a look at a technique that I came up with for modeling the pattern that goes into um, a tufted cushion, um, in particular the Chesterfield sofa pattern. So it's a little bit different in that it has the creasing. So let's get started. We are going to start by drawing out a square and let's cut the square in half diagonally and then let's delete one of the halves. Now let's draw an edge from the corner to the midpoint. Let's draw out a circle along that edge, set our segments to 16 like so. Now let's take the edge here and divide it into five segments. Now we're going to take the piece of the circle that's intersecting the triangle and we're going to offset that down and snap it to each of those five segments. And this is going to lead us to our buttonhole, which will be the opening at the very end. So if you have a smaller button, you want to pull that last offset a little bit further. So let's delete the excess there and erase that piece. Now let's connect the segments and making sure that we maintain quads because we are going to be subdividing this with sub D and we're going to draw one extra segment here and I will show you what that's for in a second. Now let's grab this bottom edge loop here, switch to vertex tools and we want to set our soft selection and play with it just so that it grabs our um, circle offsets and all of those rings. And we don't want to grab anything above that. Now reset our soft selection to zero and then pull down just this last edge loop again. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to want to mirror this across and we're going to mirror along that diagonal edge there. Like so. Now let's group everything and do a quick test with sub D. Everything looks good. Now let's create our crease grab this edge loop, we're going to use the offset loops tool and hold control and pull out the offset. That's in our tools menu under quad face tools. Now let's grab this middle loop, switch to vertex tools and then deselect the bottom vertices and lift this up a little bit. Now let's grab the opposing edges on either side here and let's crease them like so. Now we want to grab these two edge loops and we're going to move them down, but first we want to deselect the bottom and that's why we added that extra edge loop in there so we could pull this down like so. And this is the basis for the entire pattern. Let's just mirror this across in this direction and let's mirror it across in this direction. and have to hit shift to unlock it. There we go. Now we have our tiling pattern to create the bulk of our Chesterfield. Call it the Chesterfield pattern. And we can move three copies in each direction or whatever we are modeling and create the shape. Um, the one difference with the Chesterfield is it's a little more elongated, um, that diamond shape in the middle. But overall, I think this looks pretty good. Again, we see the size of our buttonholes. We can adjust that. Um, we can scale this, but we can see the wrinkling, um, the kind of the tension around where the buttonholes are, and then the creases there, that diamond shape creasing that the Chesterfield is known for. There we go, turn off shadows, we can see it a lot better. And we can turn off sub D and scale this out a little bit if we wanted to. But that's all for today. I just wanted to give you guys a quick sneak peek at what I'm working on. Um, we may take this a little further in another video, but we're going to leave it here for now. I hope everybody has a great day, and we will see you in the next video.